In 1835, Lord Mokada wrote, he would like to have the best and the brightest in the Indian civil service. They were certainly bright. Now, before the ICS officers were sent to India, it is said they were taught two golden rules. Rule one, an ICS officer is always right. I repeat, rule one, an ICS officer is always right. Rule two, when an ICS officer goes wrong, rule one will apply. I think even today, we seem to have a feeling that the IAS officers and the All India Service officers, the civil servants of this country, have such a chip over their shoulders. If the civil servants are dispensers of India's destiny, their first duty should be to the people. Their second duty should be to the people. Their third duty should be to the people. The ICS was for the Raj. We are for the Swaraj. There is a lot of difference between Raj and Swaraj. This is a difference which should be reflected in the attitude, the perceptions, the approaches of the IAS as distinguished from the ICS. If India has prospered, if India has hit the head, come to the top of the world in information technology, if India is raising to be an economic superpower, India is already a cultural superpower. Who is responsible for that? Yes, the system has delivered. Our public administration rose to the occasion. Our public distribution system rose to the occasion. Our public health system rose to the occasion. Can we say that bureaucracy has not delivered? Bureaucracy has delivered. The bureaucracy has achieved in certain respects, but they have failed in miserably in other respects. Where, what is the reason for this failure? The reason for this failure is lack of adaptation of the bureaucracy to changing situations. When I say this, what was the responsibility of the steel frame of administration that is ICS? They were meant to hold the Raj together. They were supposed to rule over the subjects. But in independent India, the bureaucracy has a rule for the people. That is the difference. That difference is the change from regulatory administration to development administration. The attitude that is required by the regulatory administration is different from the attitude that is required for the administrator in the development administration. I would say that the Indian bureaucracy, Indian bureaucracy is an excellent system, but how do we make it work? That is the thing. There is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. It's an instrument. It's a tool. It's a weapon. Use it properly. It's not enough that the bureaucracy is overruled. The political executive also should be overruled. And what is the relation between bureaucracy and the political executive? In a democracy, we all know, we all accept that political executive is supreme because they have the will of the people reflected through them. And what is the role of the bureaucracy? The role of the bureaucracy is advice. The political executives, what is right and what is wrong? What are the pros and cons of an issue? Tell them these are the options before you. You make the final decision. And if the advice of the bureaucracy is accepted, the bureaucrat has to implement it faithfully. Suppose the advice is rejected, he has to implement it more faithfully. The role of the bureaucracy is only as advisors, but are you doing it properly? Well, as Lord Maysfield said, advice is seldom welcome. And those who need it the most like it the least. Yes, we encounter such situations when we deal with political executive. And what is political interference? I would say everything that we see around us from the politician is not interference. I make a subtle distinction between political action and political interference. Political action is when an MP or an MLA comes and puts legitimate pressure on a district collector to implement the government policies and to ensure that the beneficiaries get the end, the end result goes to the beneficiaries. Political action has to be welcomed. Political interference has been resented to the need. Yes, that is what the bureaucracy has been doing. But unfortunately, there are aberrations. One swallow does not make a summer. What is required is not tokenism, tokenism to total change. It is this change from tokenism to total coverage that is envisaged in the Karma Yogi mission. This is meant to overrule the bureaucracy in the country, to make it well-oiled 
and fighting fit. I'm sure that is a well-calculated and timely attempt and much all depends on the success of this team. This country has a great bureaucratic tradition. All that is required is overall it, update it. And that is the thing that is so to be done. I think this will be certainly a game changer, a milestone in India's system of governance.